on this edition of The American Veteran. A look back at this year's most interesting stories. Innovative health care programs. Just like your skin. Improved benefits for veterans. There's a new program. Use it. VA collaborates with Ancestry.com. The benefit to VA was the indexing of these records. And a look at the veteran community. Welcome to the American Veteran. I'm Jeremy Wheeler, an Army veteran. Joining me is our active duty guest host, Petty Officer Jen Blake. Welcome, Jen, and thank you for your service. Thanks, Jeremy, and thank you for yours as well. I'm happy to be here as we look back on some of the best stories of this past season. This past year, we covered a study where veterans and clinicians were using the Wii Fit video game system with positive results. An Army veteran, Bill Bomer injured his spinal cord while breaking camp in the first Gulf War. His injury grew worse over the years until a task like walking to the mailbox became impossible. Before my surgeries, and even afterwards, balance was a big problem. I stayed in the floor about as much as I was up, upright. So you lean left and right, whichever way the flag is. But now, Bill is skiing. Well, skiing indoors on a video game system. <laughs> Just like you're skiing. You got your whole body going. Yes. After six surgeries and years of physical therapy, Bill has finally found his favorite exercise routine to improve his balance and coordination. This you have to really concentrate on it, moving it forward, back, side, side. Are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. I had seen this um, um, with my kids playing around when it initially came on and felt it was very exciting, especially with the Wii Fit, with the balance board had some physical activity, so th thought maybe we could try. And with so many veterans in the healthcare system in need of activity. Good morning, Mr. Gilbert. Good morning. Dr. Padala designed a study to introduce them to video games. Playing around is a big problem because they are getting deconditioned by doing that, losing a lot of muscle mass because they're not using or moving their muscles around. Oh, I'm ready. You're okay. ready. So that is how former Army howitzer gunner and veteran of the Korean War, Leon Gilbert, has come to twist and turn and grunt his way, all to drop a ball in the hole. You got it. Level five, good gravy. You're working your body, the whole thing. It made me a brain, but it's, uh, I like this here, I really do. Which is an important point for the doctors here at the VA Healthcare Center in North Little Rock, Arkansas. At the Geriatric Research Education and Clinical Center, they want to translate proven research down to clinical practice. One, two, three. This is where progress is measured. Here, Bill Bomer, a man once nearly paralyzed, takes a balance turn. test and yeah, shaves his time down. 7.1, is very good, so. I could tell I, fe I felt more balanced. My gait was better. Sure was. There's something appealing in the game system. Skiing down a slope, dropping balls in a hole, even a little hip bumping seems to cement the connection to an exercise routine. Because Bill can make it down the slopes at VA, he can also make it out to the mailbox and back to the kitchen and live a normal life back home. A rock veteran, Crystal Stokes, discovered competition and camaraderie at VA Summer Sports Clinic this year. Crystal says connecting to other veterans at the clinic helps in her rehabilitation and transition back to civilian life. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. The only thing I'd done my entire life was the Marine Corps and I was good at it. Um, so the fact that I didn't have that, I was kind of lost. I didn't know what to do. Even being from a Marine Corps family didn't prepare 11 year veteran Crystal Stokes for her transition to civilian life. The Marine Sergeant who served three combat tours in Iraq struggled with PTSD, a knee injury and feelings of isolation. I went through a period where I had to get help from a family member in order to pay rent. So I didn't have anywhere to go, didn't have any idea what was going on. I was injured, then I couldn't work, couldn't do anything. Oh, that one, she's tired than the other. Crystal's athletic prowess and Marine Corps training paid off in a surprising way. 
she was recruited to play for the San Diego Surge professional women's football team. I'm on defense, I'm a defensive end. It's an awesome feeling, I love it, it's great. And she found a camaraderie similar to the Marines with her new teammates. They've gotten through me through a lot. Um, they've seen me at some of my lowest. They've seen me irritated, they've seen me mad, they've seen me happy, they've seen me sad. That if I ever really truly needed anything, um, they'd be there in a heartbeat with, with the help. This summer, Crystal was among 100 other veterans who joined together at the National Veterans Summer Sports Clinic in San Diego. Splitting into teams, they took aim at kayaking, rowing, <laughs> judo, sailing, cycling, and Crystal's favorite, archery. You hit it! She even made a point yes, of encouraging reluctant teammates. I love it, good job! They gained the opportunity to challenge themselves um, outside of their local community and also see the VA in a whole different light. <laughs> VA has a variety of competitions, including the Golden Age Games, Wheelchair Games, and the Summer and Winter Sports Clinics. We met a group of young veterans who are using VA vocational rehabilitation and GI Bill benefits to pursue careers in the fine arts, proving that you can use your earned benefits to study or train in just about any field that interests you. Army veteran Deshondon Jeans takes assorted materials, almost anything from anywhere, and assembles them into what's called collage art. It is basically two-dimensional with little three-dimensional quality. Man, I'll be able to cut it with a pair of scissors. It's me taking many different materials and, and adhering them to basically a two-dimensional surface. Deshaunton is just one of more than a dozen military veterans now studying art, with financial assistance from VA, at the world-famous Corcoran College of Art and Design in Washington, D.C. Judith Resendez is another Army veteran studying here with support from the GI Bill. He served in Iraq and lost parts of two limbs. Following his recovery, he came to the Corcoran to study ceramics. I actually started prior at a, at a community college, and that's where I really found my path towards uh, art and actually ceramics. Air Force veteran Corinne Rodney Hopla studied photojournalism here and created this exhibit of photographs titled Incidents. Inspired by her military experience, it documents her perspective on combat-related post-traumatic stress. In the news, we always hear about our brothers in arms, but we really don't hear too much about our, our, our sisters in arms and how they're dealing with their struggle with combat-related post-traumatic stress syndrome. And I can use any other material that I want but I choose to use wood. Like Corinne, Marine Corps veteran Jeremiah Holland is attending Corcoran with the help of VA-provided vocational rehabilitation assistance. He's thrilled to be here, he told us, but at first, it took time. For me, um, coming from a, you know, a regiment and organization like the Marine Corps, it was about two years before I really felt like I could not really drop the identity of, of being a Marine, but assume the identity of being a student or an art student. It's a new chapter in your life and um, it is difficult, um, but it, it's well worth it. I mean, you, these benefits are here. You, you paid for it with your service and you put into the GI Bill, so you should definitely take advantage of it. You just gotta find what really excites you and what you can see yourself doing, because then it's really not work, you know? You enjoy it, it won't be a job, it'll just be something you enjoy. That's something each of these veterans came to see for themselves, that in shaping their art, they themselves became shaped by it. Veterans and some eligible family members can use VA benefits for on-the-job training, apprenticeships, and non-college degree programs. In its ongoing commitment to serve America's veterans, VA introduced the Fully Developed Claim, an initiative designed to rapidly process VA compensation or pension claims. Here is the story of one veteran's experience with the program. 
David Matthew Patty was 19 when he joined the Air Force in 1966. I said to my family, I said, well, if I have to go, number one, I want to join, and number two, I don't want to go to Vietnam. So I'm going to join the Air Force, and that way I don't have to go to Vietnam. <laughs> David was sent to Vietnam in 1968. I'd go back to Vietnam tomorrow, I'd serve tomorrow, I'd do everything, I don't want to change anything. Upon his return, David married his high school sweetheart, Judy, raised three daughters, lived responsibly, and worked hard so that they could enjoy the golden years with their seven grandchildren. I was doing pretty good, but then it all shut down on me. In the fall of 2012, David Patty was diagnosed with lung cancer. The probable cause, exposure to Agent Orange. Even though my cancer is still called treatable, well, let's call it what it is. It could turn terminal tomorrow. I mean, that's life. Uh, they were talking about something called fully developed claims. David learned about fully developed claims from his neighbor and fellow Vietnam veteran, Frank DeSimone. So when uh, I took you down there. Who connected him to Tim Grossman, National Service Officer at the Disabled American Veterans Regional Office in Philadelphia. He was exposed to herbicides in Vietnam. We had evidence that he had verified service there. And he had this condition that the VA has said, well, the law tells us that we're going to grant this. You just come in with the paperwork. So we filed a fully developed claim. He was granted in four weeks. The reason a veteran should file a fully developed claim is because it is the fastest means to get a compensation or pension claim processed. Craig Surgott is the creator of the fully developed claim. A fully developed claim is a claim submitted by a veteran or survivor with all the information necessary to decide the claim. For a fully developed claim, VA will still gather federal records if identified by the claimant and will provide a medical examination if it's determined necessary to decide the claim. Veterans can file fully developed claims in one of two ways. They can file it online at eBenefits or they can file it in paper on one of the EZ forms. Even if you started the claim two months ago and you, you just now hit send, VA will consider that earlier date that you initiated the claim as the date we can potentially pay you benefits back to. Go and do it. If you, either A, if you haven't done it, do it. It's out there for you. B, if you have done it and you got discouraged, there's a new program. Use it. The Department of Veterans Affairs has partnered with Ancestry.com to bring burial records from historic national cemeteries into the digital age. We knew from our visits to the national cemeteries that some directors had held on to historic burial ledgers. Many of them date back to the uh, mid to late 1860s. We have approximately 160 ledgers that were Thank you. maintained by the quartermaster of the U.S. Army, and those were transferred to the National Archives uh, probably in the late 1930s. We digitized over 9,000 pages. Once the ledgers were digitized, we packaged up the ledgers and sent them to the National Archives and Records Administration for safekeeping. Ancestry has been working with the National Archives for a number of years, digitizing records that they find are important to genealogists. 144 volumes of burial registers were shipped from the National Archives in D.C. to Ancestry's office in Silver Spring, Maryland. The archives maintain custody of those records through the shipment and through the scanning process, and seven archives technicians went through each volume page by page to make sure that all the information that was necessary for these, for veterans to do research was visible and could safely be imaged by Ancestry.com camera operators. We go page by page, we save each of the pages at a high resolution, and then we combine those with the indexes that we've already created, and the two are served up on Ancestry.com for the veterans to find their records. The benefit to VA and to NCA in particular was uh, the indexing of these records. Previously, you would have to know where someone was buried and go search them out in that cemetery's burial ledger. And now we have the ability to just go online, type in a name to their search engine, and um, find out where that soldier is buried. For people to connect with their families and connect to that past is very important. And we are very proud to be able to offer that to the Veterans Administration and to, through NARA. The partnership between the National Cemetery Administration, the National Archives and Records Administration, and Ancestry.com is invaluable. 
Jim Martinson lost both of his legs below the knee in Vietnam. His response to this adversity is simply amazing. The day I landed in Vietnam, I knew that this was, a, this was going to be a tough thing. Because we were out in the field for 30 days at a time, they would have to bring us supplies and ammunition. I had sent a couple of the guys up after the helicopter, and they were all 20 feet away from me, and I thought, well, I better run up there too. I need to ask a couple of questions on what we're going to do tomorrow. I turned around, I, I took a couple of steps when somebody further up tripped a bouncing Betty landmine. I woke up in Yokohama, Japan, and looked at the end of the bed, and what you see is, is what happened to me. I want people to know that I am just like anybody else. I can do whatever, whatever I want to do and whatever I set my mind to. I think I have this, like, I'm going to do it. Don't, don't help me. <laughs> There's not a lot to do when you're a bilateral above amputee. I mean, you can do weights and things like that, and you go to the gym. But what happened was there was a group of guys, and I'd heard about uh, wheelchair basketball. When I came home from my uh, first basketball practice, my hands were completely covered with blisters. But man, when you can't even close your hands or open your hands, and then I go back to another practice, I've got tape all over my hands, and it was just incredible. It, it's, it was so much fun. How I segued into the road racing and the way that fit was that road racing started becoming really, really popular in the mid-70s. And I thought, well, wow, this is great, you know. So I got, got involved with that, and it just, it took over. Traveled all over the world, traveled to Europe, to Asia, and, and just would never thought that that would ever happen in my life. When I started uh, Magic Emotion, which is the name of the company, uh, we, we wanted to take it to do every single product we could possibly do. And the wheelchairs back then weighed about 55 pounds. And a friend of mine and myself came up with this little baby. Now obviously all the wheels are gone on it, but what you see is you see a lightweight aluminum frame. That dropped the weight of that wheelchair from 55 to 24 pounds. It actually won the Boston Marathon in that frame. This is the evolution of that wheelchair. That wheelchair went from a little square box aluminum frame with a whole bunch of rules to a frame that the total weight with the wheels and everything is 15 pounds, 15 pounds. The mono ski was developed by myself and Jamie McCormick here in Washington State. We wanted it to be able to be so you could be self sufficient. Get on the chairlift, get off the chairlift, you can ski by yourself, you can do everything by yourself. You know, really that's what it's all about, is, is being able to get back out there and do whatever I did before and, and uh, just maybe do it a little bit differently. Man, I tell you, it, it's, you can't even imagine how great it is for somebody that has not been able to ski for uh, 20 years and now being able to go back up there and do it. I, I never looked back. If you are disabled and would like to know more about how you can participate in sports, go to va.gov backslash adaptive sports. Veterans Kelly Carlisle and Paul Grieve were looking for their next career after transitioning out of the military, one they could really get excited about. Both found what they were looking for in an unusual field. Miss Kelly, what is this? These are collard greens. Yeah, collard greens. And look, we have one red cherry tomato. I don't know that I would trade this for anything. This is how I show my commitment to my, to my country now. Morning, sheep. Anybody hungry? As a Marine, I was passionate about what I was doing. As a farmer, I feel that same passion that I did as a Marine. After a few years of transitioning out of the military, Kelly Carlisle, a single mom to Kaya, found herself jobless in her hometown of East Oakland, California. She couldn't afford daycare, so she started gardening with her daughter. 
But she also wanted to change the environment where she lived, which was called the fifth most dangerous city in America. It made me upset, you know. There's a lot of bureaucrats and teachers that talk about how we're going to make big changes here. But, you know, in the 20 years since I lived here, it hasn't changed. After his service, Paul Grieve landed in San Diego, where he thought he would reassimilate into the corporate world. He was wrong. It was harder than I thought leaving the Marine Corps, even though I didn't have any extreme uh, combat situations while I was in. Um, just the camaraderie. I, I really missed being around the guys, training outside, constantly working with my hands. Paul wears the same combat boots and belt from his days in Iraq. And right. Kelly wears the same yeah, jacket all the time, yeah. showing that she is a veteran. Right. Reminders of their pride and service. Run! Ah! Now, Kelly and Paul have found a new mission in farming. The mission is to continue to serve. In learning about healthy lifestyles, kids are empowered by planting and growing their own vegetables and then selling them to the community. She saw a need in her community. She saw a need for people to be, have access to fresh food. Tia Christopher, also a Navy veteran, is the chief of staff of the Farmer Veteran Coalition, a nonprofit that connects military veterans with opportunities for employment, training, and places to heal on farms with the help of grants, business assistance, and mentoring. <laughs> Starting on one acre of land, Paul Grieve and his family bought and raised 54 chickens with hopes of selling them. To their surprise, they sold out in three weeks. From that experience, Primal Pastures was born, a family-run organic farm selling pasture poultry. Now with an army of 1,200 chickens and 100 sheep, raised the way Grieve thinks they should be, outside. And the business is run the way Paul wants it. As the farm grew, Paul reached out to the Farmer Veteran Coalition and received a grant to buy more land. He also uses the coalition to stay in touch with other veteran farmers through the organization's online connections. Both Paul and Kelly agree, sometimes you just have to follow your heart. Veterans have options. We have a world of options. You don't have to go into uh, an office job if you don't want to work in an office. You know, try out a few things. Just take a step. Just take any kind of action is better than no action. And who knows, maybe it'll turn into something great. The Farmer Veteran Coalition refers veterans to VA for health care and other benefits when appropriate. To learn more, visit farmvetco.org. Norman Hatch is a living witness of American military history. As a Marine Corps combat photographer during World War II, he documented and shared the sacrifices made by fellow American service members overseas. Beyond doubt, this is the single most familiar image of American victory in World War II. It was just one devil of a good picture, and he shot it in the breadth of a second, and you can see in the energy and the exertion of putting the pole up, the strength that was needed to do it. Norman Hatch should know as well as anyone. He didn't shoot the famous photograph, but he was there to witness the event and served as a combat photographer himself from the earliest days of the war until its conclusion. Once you get that camera up and you start shooting, you're in a different world. Very rarely did I ever get down on the ground flat and shoot. I did once or twice just to get the angle. Let's say 95% of it was standing up and shooting. I wasn't scared. I didn't have a, a fear factor working, which if I did, I think would have stopped me from doing what I was doing. Not even, it seems, with motion pictures, which Norman produced throughout the war. His body of work includes one of the first and most famous war documentaries ever produced. With the Marines at Tarawa, a real-life account of America's first major amphibious battle in the Pacific, won an Oscar from the motion picture industry in 1944. But that's far from being its most important distinction. The public was not aware of what war was like until my film. There were bodies floating in the water, up and back and forth, as you know. The film's content was considered so sensitive that President Roosevelt himself was called upon to approve its release. 
Norman's film had a powerful motivating effect on audiences. And ever since, appreciation for the kind of work produced by combat cameramen like Norman Hatch continues to inform and often inspire. So too with the image known as Old Glory Goes Up on Mount Suribachi, which emblemized the conquest of the Japanese island of Iwo Jima. Taken in February 1945 by a press photographer, it became a symbol to the nation of impending victory. But there's more to the story. The image that people think of as the perfect moment of the end of a conflict when triumph is realized and, um, uh, and heroic soldiers raise the American flag signaling uh, the end of, uh, of, uh, of a battle, uh, in fact came uh, fairly early in a conflict that would stretch on for another month. What's more, says Norman Hatch, photo editors cropped the original image to produce the smaller but far more evocative image that we know today. And that is what hit the States and on a Sunday, it was a hit in about every, every uh, newspaper in the country of any value, and uh, so uh, it raised the spirits of the people, mainly because it was the flag and the fact that they were up on the top of that mountain. And so uh, you can't beat a thing like that. That concludes this edition of The American Veteran. The Department of Veterans Affairs is honored to bring you this program.